Hi, friends from around the world. Let me propose to you something different today. I want to go through a concrete exercise, an exercise which uh, is not, you know, based on experience, not a, a real one, but a hypothetical one. In admitting you are a lawyer, practicing lawyer in any country of the world, maybe Dubai, for example, and you have your daily practice open and a client comes in and he wants to protect a new perfume. So he is the inventor of a new perfume and he wants you to protect that perfume. A straightforward case, right? So nothing that would be out of the extraordinary, I think. And you would discuss with him what about a name for the uh, perfume. So uh, you uh, talk about the indication of origin, a trademark. And uh, he says, well, he thought about it and he comes up with the name XYZ and some ornaments or so. So a figurative uh, trademark and you make a quick check and everything seems okay. So it is distinctive. Uh, it is not being taken, uh, taken by others. It is not offensive and so on. So it seems a good trademark for the uh, perfume uh, which is proposed by the client. Well, you think as well of a possibility of a 3D mark and of a, or a design uh, for that matter in order to uh, protect the packaging or the bottle. You know, uh, the perfume market is a bit in that sense, oriented in that sense to link the customer also with a design, uh, attractive design or attractive bottle, attractive packaging to a, uh, to a trademark. And uh, the client says, well, uh, he has thought about it, but wants to make this decision later on in order not to get too much involved with uh, the money. But he's very much interested in protecting the smell. Now, here where it becomes less straightforward in your mind, and I would like you to accompany in my thinking or what, is, what could be your thinking at that moment, uh, through uh, a quick uh, revision uh, of what could that thinking be. So you may want to think of a trade secret. A uh, trade secret is a possibility. It is also straightforward. As you uh, know, in Europe, you don't need to register it in order to become effective. Uh, you need to put some... Um, some boundaries around it, uh, so some intricacies on uh, trade secret is that you need to protect it, uh, you need uh, to make for your employees, if you have any, uh, non-disclosure agreements and so on, and uh, it must be under, under seal somewhere or in, in your safe or whatever, uh, the secret, the recipe to do it. Uh, well, that would be uh, still okay. But then, uh, if it is replicated elsewhere uh, without uh, being stealed, stealed from you, so uh, if uh, there is no disclosure from your side or uh, uh, it is uh, not being illegally obtained, then you have no defense. The trade secret is gone, so uh, there's no protection elsewhere, and uh, this may not be the ultimate goal of the client, then uh, you may think about a trade secret, sorry, a trade secret, a copyright. <clears throat> a copyright would be a possibility. Now, you're a European uh, lawyer or you want to uh, protect this uh, Dubai trademark or the Dubai client's invention or the Dubai client's, uh, client's uh, new product in Europe. And, uh, you know, a bit about the copyright in Europe. And there is a, a case uh, from the European Court of Justice, which is, so to say, the ultimate uh, ruler with regard to uh, European IP terms, uh, and copyright is one of them, 
uh, he says is ne uh, it needs to be original and it needs to be uh, work, a protectable, uh, protectable work. The originality here is not a problem, although it is in most of the copyright cases, but here that would not be a problem. Now, the case uh, I refer to of the European Court of Justice is about a taste, not a scent. Uh, what is a, a taste? That was a taste of, uh, of cheese, a Dutch case, Dutch cheese, uh, which came up uh, all the way to the European Court of Justice, and the, uh, it was about the protection of a taste of cheese with regard to European copyright protection. Now, what did uh, the Court of uh, Justice rule on that? And I will cite here the point number 42, which is here on the screen. It says that the taste of a food product <coughs> cannot be pinned down with precision and objectivity. Unlike, for example, a literary, pictorial, cinematographic or musical work, which is a precise and objective form of expression, the taste of a food product will be identified essentially on the basis of taste sensations and experience, which are subjective and variable since they depend inter alia on factors particular to the person tasting Uh, the product concerned, such as age, food preferences, and consumption habits, as well as on the environment or context in which the product is consumed. Meaning that the uh, Court of Justice said the taste of a product, taste of cheese, is not protectable. It cannot be determined with sufficient uh, precision in order to, uh, to allow uh, the public to identify precisely the scope of protection. And in fact, with regard to the, the taste is nothing else with the scent in that case, uh, it has, so to say, the same problems with regard to copyright uh, protection. <clears throat> you know that the scent degrades Uh, moreover, over time, uh, the uh, skin, it interacts with the skin as well. So uh, some skin, it has uh, a different taste than uh, interacting with another skin and the humidity of the environment is important and so on. So the chemical formula is not uh, that one uh, which is sufficiently uh, precise and objective to identify the scope of protection of that copyright. So copyright is probably not the right way uh, to go to advise your client in that sense. Now, what about patents? We have all the instruments here of IP, patent, well, novelty, industrial application. Uh, so we need to solve a technical problem here in order to get to industrial application and uh, you see already uh, it is uh, problematic with regard to uh, patents, what technical problem you possibly uh, would uh, resolve with, with that, uh, that perfume. Uh, there, is, uh, there is none, uh, the inventive step uh, that could be there, but uh, there is no, so to say, industrial uh, application uh, with regard uh, to, uh, to that. There is no, no inventive step with regard to an industrial application, a process. There is no, no uh, process uh, which can be uh, uh, seen as solving a technical problem. So although it would be uh, straightforward from the beginning to think of patents, but patents is not the right way to go either. It is, is it the right way protection? Probably uh, not as well, because you have to disclose everything, the industrial process, how to come to uh, that, um, that perfume and the uh, chemical uh, formula, what are the ingredients and so on. So you have to disclose everything 
and uh, thus you uh, probably do not want because you would have protection only for 20 years and beyond 20 years uh, that uh, would be gone. Everybody uh, could, could do that. <clears throat> so patents is not uh, the uh, right path either. Well, uh, you go back to trademarks and you know uh, you have heard about olfactory marks and that is not uh, uh, straightforward anymore. Olfactory marks uh, are not mentioned in the TRIPS agreement, although uh, they are recognized as non-traditional marks. And uh, the uh, European Union, with its reform in 2016, it uh, strapped, uh, so to say, the representation requirement with regard to trademarks. And this precisely in order to allow non-traditional marks among them there would be you know hologram and uh, moving marks and so on and also a possibility of olfactory marks there was one olfactory mark uh, but this is anecdotal uh, in the beginning or end of uh, uh, of 2000 or so uh, there was the fresh cut green grass as a smell which has been allowed by the boards of appeal of EU IPO but there was an outlier so to say that was not uh, something which has been adopted into a practice so <clears throat> we don't have really uh, some olfactory marks on the register worldwide so to say it is also the subjectivity again uh, so it is not possible for the white public to assess what would be the scope of protection of an olfactory mark uh, to uh, determine with, sub with uh, objectivity, with precision. And again, uh, there is, you know, the, the interaction with the skin and uh, what are the humidity and uh, the environment, uh, which may have some influence in order to get to uh, that taste. Uh, everybody uh, would think about uh, something something different so uh, there's the old discussion uh, over uh, over a dinner party when you know the best wine uh, the host has to offer is opened and you talk about the wine what is the taste of the wine and um, again the uh, opinions differ one will go will, would go for raspberry another for citrix another for blueberry another for you know, uh, uh, the forest uh, or leather or whatever. So uh, subjectivity, it is too much, uh, too much subjective uh, for people uh, to, uh, to determine with objectivity what would be the perfume or, for that matter, the taste of a, a perfume. Now, you are <coughs> more or less at the end of your thinking process and what would be now your approach to the client? What would be your advice to the client? Well, every client is, uh, is different and uh, I cannot give you, uh, you know, <laughs> an advice which fits all. But what could be a possibility is uh, that the uh, smell is not something which is really readily uh, protected uh, within IP. What you can do is to build around the smell uh, some walls which allows the public to identify your product with regard to other products, although they have a similar smell. And uh, you have the possibility to go in advance, so you are the first with this smell, and uh, to build some trust, uh, some connection with the uh, clients, with customers, so to say, and uh, build around uh, the, uh, the bottle, which can be protected, if it is a special bottle, which can be protected by IP, a package, which can be protected by IP, so a 3D mark or a design, the bottle as well, a 3D mark or a design, and uh, you have the trademark, <clears throat> And uh, you have some building blocks around uh, the smell, which gives you a possibility to protect, well, indirectly also the uh, smell. In any case, it would 
uh, be possible for the customer to identify any fake product with regard to yours, even if the smell is very similar or identical. So you would have the quality, so to say, and the first mover advantage in order to get some, you know, market dominance uh, for that for that product. So that was it. Uh, I went uh, through uh, the whole IP process. Uh, it is a case which uh, permits you to uh, go through the whole uh, portfolio of IP in order to come to a conclusion with regard to your client. Hopefully that was a good lesson for you. Thank you.